Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to another video? It's another paid request. This time from Tomas. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. And for those interested in requesting any type of review, topic, reaction, commentary, re review, or what have you, feel free to send it directly to my PayPal, usually the best bet, or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for an 80s movie called Thrashin', which I gotta be honest, I had never seen the film. I had heard of it. it came out in 1986. It involves skateboarding. It stars Josh Brolin after the Goonies, but well before being Thanos and Avengers films and Cable and Deadpool 2, No Country for Old Men, etc. He plays a guy that's come to LA and he's gonna be in this pool competition. He's a skateboarder. And he's hanging out with his buddies, living there with him. And he meets this girl. And she is the sister of Hook. Played by Robert Rustler from Nightmare on Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Who is the leader of this punk skateboarding group called the Daggers. And you know these guys are bad guys because they're doing bat flips off of trucks. And there's an Asian guy with dreadlocks. And they say that Brighton is a memory. They talk shit about Brighton. This is a person breakdancing. They say Brighton, it's a memory. So they're shitting on the movie Brighton. Shit on Boogaloo Shrimp. The motherfuckers, you know they're evil. I just, I'm like, I'm laughing. But I'm like, this is like one of the most 80s movies ever. With the music. Like this punk rock skateboarding group go over the hill uh, the main theme is thrashing by meatloaf rest in peace meatloaf I'm like who's singing this song that's meatloaf I can't say I like the soundtrack but at the same time the soundtrack was fun to listen to because it was so fucking 80s it's not a soundtrack I would ever listen to again like rad the bicycle movie I love that soundtrack thunder in your heart send me an angel I think this is a sincerely good soundtrack over the Top with Sylvester Stallone, Cobra with Sylvester Stallone, Rocky IV with Sylvester Stallone. Um, this, I mean, I wouldn't say I thought these songs were good, but they're so damn 80s, they're kind of <laughs> still fun to listen to, including one of the sappiest love songs I have ever heard in my fucking life. But man, uh, it was so 80s, and I miss that era, that I kind of... Just had a smile about it. And then pretty much it's Josh Brolin trying to get ready for his competition. Him and his buddies have this half pipe that they... A lot of good skateboarding action. If you're a skateboarding fan, if you love skateboarding stuff, this is the movie for you. It's a lot of nice skateboarding action. I always come in people that you do that because I could never do that. And it looks like Josh Brolin could skate a little bit. Of course they make hide his face so that the expert could come in to do more of the crazier maneuvers. Uh, Robert Rustler, it, it's, he's fun as the bad guy. It's such, uh, in a way, over-the-top performance. Uh, and he, he cares for his sister, uh, who's played by Pamela Diddley. I think, sadly, she passed away. I could be wrong on that, but I think uh, she was in a film that I like called Aberration from the 90s. Pretty decent creature feature film. I think sadly she's passed away. Forgive me if I'm wrong. It's trying to be maybe like a little bit of Romeo and Juliet. Because they're from two different worlds. and But they love each other. Although with just without the, the double suicide. I mean this is a film that you have this new band playing called the Red Hot Chili Peppers. You go oh shit okay. So, soundtrack ain't too bad. You got the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They ain't too bad. You have lines like the when the friends are trying to get in the club and they're checking them. One guy goes, hey, please, don't touch my Elvis. Never heard anyone refer to their dick as Elvis, but first time for everything. Maybe I should do that. Uh, suck my Elvis. At pretty much, Robert Russler doesn't want the guy to go out with his sister, 
and they either chase him, ready to beat him up, and Josh Brolin escapes on a bus, or they burn down their half pipe, or what do I have a joust? And so there's a scene where all these skateboarders have all these road flares, and it looks like they have nunchucks, but there's something else attached to the other end of it. It's something bigger, and they're coming towards each other, and they're jousting on skateboards with kind of nunchucks but not I like this is I love it this is fucking pure 80s like this is 80s but at the same time it's like this is I, I just see why people if they think this was a bad movie but I th if you love 80s films I think you'll get some I don't know how else to describe it. Full 80s style. With little substance. I'll say there's little substance in the film. The love story. I mean the. What they get together. And the love scene. The, the, the lyrics are so on the nose. You know. Let our love begin. Like the lyrics are so on the nose. Telling you what it's about and what's going on and he thought this and she thought that <laughs> again one of the sappiest love songs I've ever heard in my life but I it was still enjoyable I mean the competition at the end is really cool because it's on of course the LA Massacre that's the name of the race because there's the pool competition but then they fuck him over, and he loses. And during the jowls, Josh Brolin gets his arm broken, and he blames his, the sister of Hook, of Robert Russler, because you weren't there, you didn't help me out, you got me involved with this. So they're apart, but they miss each other, so by the end they get back together. Sorry, spoilers. But then there's this big competition. The Again, it's a downhill race, of this mountain and or this hill I should say and I, I just like the fast called the LA Massacre and this PCA's that probably be called too mean to call it that way and it's really cool like I guess the director was a choreographer I know he passed away uh, he directed if you like Mystery Science Theory 3000 he kind of directed that film Space Mutiny with Red Brown although for what I read up someone he loved had just passed away so he didn't direct much of it someone else did but his name had to be credited but yeah for what I'm saying he was like a choreographer from back in the day and then he got into films and the way this choreographed is pretty good with the skateboarding. Because there's a lot of people. There's like at least 50 people on the same row skateboarding. And the camera's going by all these skateboarders. And a lot of them are just wiping out and falling through their ass. And falling into the trees. And uh, I thought this was pretty well done. Nowadays it'd be all like CGI manipulated. Or CGI enhanced, or uh, too fast cutting and editing instead of letting it breathe naturally the, the sequence. But uh, just to see how these number, numbers dwindle, actually that was pretty good, pretty well done. Spoiler alerts: Josh Brolin wins, and then boom, Robert Russler pays his respects. Now Robert Russler. Now Hook respects him. Which I thought kind of came out of the blue. By hey you beat me. Now I respect you. I guess this is how it was in the 80's. You get in a bar fight. You beat the shit out of each other. But then you don't have a drink afterwards. <laughs> but at least they do showcase that you know he does care for his sister and at least there's a little bit of that but you know if there's maybe a little bit more development on 
Robert Russell's character, or a little bit more of him doubting what he's doing is right or wrong. Like I said, a bit more substance <laughs> that would have helped. I mean, the soundtrack was fun to listen to in at 80 cents, but at the same time, I can't see... It. They work for the movie itself, and it's 80s ball of energy. But outside of the movie, I would never listen to these songs again. Like, Rad, I would. I, I, Thunder in Your Heart is one of my favorite songs. You know, Rocky, you know, Bill Conti's score, or you know, I the Tiger, Rocky 3, I'll listen to. I love Meatloaf, the God, not the food. Rest in peace to him. So sad he passed away. Really liked a lot of his songs. Like a power fell to go until it's gone. So sad that he passed away. So it was cool to hear a song I never heard from, from him before. I didn't recognize his voice at first. I'm like, who's seen it? That's me, Lofo oh, shit. Devo has a song, Red Hot Chili Pepper. So so pretty good band, so it's worth a listen to during the movie. So it's, it's definitely not the worst soundtrack ever, I'll say that. It's got some noticeable bands in it. And the movie went at a good pace. It didn't feel boring. It was just either you, you listen to the way these guys talk. Oh, they got some tasty babes here. Or goofing off where they take the guy's car and they make it into a convertible. My dad's going to kill me. Hey, look at this. You got a great convertible. And look what you're going to do. Oh, do I really? <laughs> like, they made the guy change his mind. It was a good idea to make his car into a convertible. And again, you get some decent skateboarding action. Now, if we're talking skateboarding movies, I would say I prefer Gleam in the Cube with Christian Slater. Which, God damn it, that deserves a fucking Blu-ray. Where the fuck is the Blu-ray of Gleam in the Cube with Christian Slater? God damn it, man. Where is the Blu-ray of Gleam in the Cube? Shit. And this does have... I mean, this got a Blu-ray. I don't know if there's any features on it. Because I don't have it. But it does have a Blu-ray. Rad finally got a Blu-ray. Which I got right over here from Vinegar Syndrome. When they had it out, picked up before it went out of stock and out of print. Let's get Gleam in the Cube on Blu-ray for fuck's sake. Come on, we got Thrashing, we got Rad, we got the Gleam the Cube, God damn it! After you're Radding and Thrashing, you got Gleam. Fuck's sake. But it, it is, this movie is what it is of its time period. Again, punk rock skateboarders named the Daggers. Half pipes and tasty babes. Songs talk about to let our love begins, and skateboard jousters with roll flares around. Uh, downhill racing, and Josh Brolin facing. If you like eighties movies, I think you'll get a kick out of the movie. Again, you may see the flaws and the lack of substance, but. I did like the movie overall. I thought it was a fun enough film that um, I doubt Josh Brolin would ever talk about the movie. Cause there was something I saw. I forget what was it. it what was the thing? GQ or not GQ? Where it's like the two people are there and they have these cards. I think Wired or something where. They kind of slide off. This is what the internet filled in. What does Josh Brolin blah? Does Josh Brolin blah? And they pull out and they're supposed to answer the question. I think he did one with like Taylor T I'm so vague with members, I apologize, but did he stay in thrashing? And he said yes. And then he didn't say anything more about it. So, that's what I would ask her about. I would ask Josh Brolin about uh, thrashing. So, I liked a lot more than Avengers Endgame. I'll say that. Sorry, Josh. Uh, and you can watch this film twice by the time that movie's over. By the time Endgame's over, you can watch this film twice. 
So with that said, even like the the store, like when the when you first see the daggers, you just this, this like evil synthesizer store where they're going over the hill. It's like oh, they're dangerous. They said breaking was a memory, the motherfuckers. Uh, like I said, I had fun with it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.